Welcome to the FAST system update where the Division of Local Government Services will provide an update to the Financial Automated Submission Tracking System or FAST by the DLGS. Our speakers for this workshop include Cynthia Lindsay and Matt Galeo. Cynthia Lindsay is the new Assistant Director for the DLGS and previously served as the Comptroller and Assistant Chief Financial Officer for Atlantic City. Ms. Lindsay is also the Qualified Purchasing Agent and former GFOA Executive Board Officer. Matt Galeo works as an assistive, uh, excuse me, Administrative Analyst for the DLGS and has played a key role in the continuing configuration of FAST and providing support to counties and municipalities across the state. I would like to thank our speakers for being here today, and please make sure you scan your badge for CEU credits. Thank you. So today, we have a captive audience, um, and we're going to do our best to tell you where we are today with FAST. Just going to take a moment for you to read this, and I'm no, not going to say anything. <laughs> it's appropriate, right? So FAST isn't your Excel document. Um, it's not going to work that way. Please don't expect it to do, because you're going to be greatly disappointed. However, in the creation of FAST, we have a mission and a vision. The FAST mission changes the internal and external environment in which communicates the various components of data. In this instance, it's our financial data that we use in local governments. The future of FAST will evolve as we build modules that allow the exchange of data used in improving fiscal analysis for various scientific, social, economic interpretations or presentation. We'll look to work smarter, not harder. Again, let's digest that for a moment. <laughs> we understand that right now it's really, really hard, but the future, it'll be very, very easy. I'm an innovative person, right? I look forward to the future. We wanted this. For 50 years, we've been doing things manually in a manual paper. So we're asking you to partner with us to get this to where it should be. FAST will increase the efficiencies and collection of dissemination of local governmental financial information with your help and ours. This is my vision. Some of you know me from a long time ago when I was your support representative for your financial uh, software. Uh, some of you may know because you were students in my classes. I have a university mind thinking that we're here to educate you, and FAST we want to use as one of those tools to do that. So you'll hear from the mastermind behind this very, very shortly. but. We want to create a FAST University. FAST University will help train the portal as it evolves. We'll do web, uh, excuse me, webinars. We'll ask for support for our affiliates, the GFOA. We're going to develop better end user documentation, kind of like a FAST for dummies, if I can copyright that. <laughs> We're going to create helpful hints continuous helpful hints. And of course, there's the DCA help desk. FAST will begin to evolve where we'll have versions and updates, so you'll know what version of FAST that's running. So as we push out the updates that you're going to see very, very shortly, you'll see what version and updates that you're working within. And it's my vision to create a toolbox. I came from the CFO world before I came with the division, so I know the tools that you need to get to this point when you're submitting your AFSs, your SDSs, your ADSs, and most importantly, your budget. We're going to try to create toolboxes for that process that gets you to that budget. You know, while you're working with the revenues and when you're working with the expenditures and you're fluctuating your tax rates, we're going to try to create a component in FAST that allows you to work within like you did with your Excel document that you do today. And then we're also going to look for that information to then in integrate with the submission into FAST. That's my vision. 
We're going to look at the data collection and the analytics. This is what is the, the criteria of FAST that makes it so valuable. We are finally able to use the collection of the data to create um, information that we'll share, that we'll be able to uh, uh, predict and trend analysis. And most importantly, we'll be able to evaluate municipalities and local governments that may be at risk for certain situations. So what are we concentrating on today? We're concentrating on generating the reports that you need. We're going to concentrate on enhancing the flexible chart of accounts. And we're going to concentrate on putting some validation in the reports that are already out there. So I'm going to take you through a little bit in more depth. In the generator reports, we all know that these are the official documents that we use in our everyday lives. The ADS, the SDS, the AFS. We need an actual introduced budget. We need an amended budget if, if, so, if so happens. And we need an adopted budget. And we need to be able to disable or shut down and identify the submitted documents. We know we're not there yet, but we will be very, very shortly. We're going to be able to delete the working drafts or the unwanted or the unfiled documents. We realize that you might have 20 AFSs out there, and we don't know which one's the right one. We understand that you might have created a document, again, because you didn't realize how to use FAST. So the division, and we're working on trying to um, drill down on the submitted document and then give the ability to delete working drafts. And we're going to be reaching out to some of you to ask you, you know, which one is your filed document. We know, because you've submitted it, but we're going to confirm and make sure that we're not deleting any documents and give the end user the ability to delete those working drafts on your own. We have a method of storing the submitted reports. Okay? There is a document concept that we're using at the division that will allow us to archive all of the um, existing reports that are out there or the future reports and transfer the information that you found now in the fiscal, report, uh, on the fiscal reports into FAST. We're going to work on reviewing the outdated or unused information found in the reports today. How many of you wonder what that eight-digit code is on the AFS? Does anybody know what it is? You know, those control numbers that are on certain lines? Bill, you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody know what they're used for? OK. Just so you know, I wanted to make sure that we don't know what they're used for, because we're going to delete them. If anybody's holding on to those numbers, make sure you save them, because they're going to go away shortly. <laughs> However, what we didn't want to do is take away mostly what you see. We wanted to give you some familiarity to what the reports and how you see them and display. And as they evolve, we'll start taking away certain sheets and certain information that no, is no long, longer needed by either you or the division. We're looking to create a table of contents to remove the legacy sheet numbers. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> These are public documents. None of our public knows that sheet 25 is your reserve for uncollected taxes. None of your public knows that sheet 11 in your budget is the, is the totals of your revenues, so forth and so on. But we will create a table of contents so that you know what page number that will be so you can find it. And we're going to work on, and most importantly, the overall cleanup of the report generation. We know that the report doesn't look like or feel like or look professional like it should. So that's first and foremost important that we want to create the public document that you can put out there and feel good about. We're going to work on cleaning up the fonts, the formatting, the alignment, correct truncation, and other placements of characters. And that we're working on in-house. We need to create some additional flexible chart of accounts codes. The FCOA codes determines an item section. Right now, you can click Add anywhere when you're adding those FCOAs. For those of you that have already put into your budget, you realize what I'm talking about. Um, in any section to create a new code. We're going to tell you that if you, if you create a code and you didn't want it, you need to deactivate it. 
not edit it and make it in change because it won't recalculate itself. So little helpful hints as you work along um, is going to be posted in our helpful hints. We're going to review and revise the current list of FCOA codes when it comes to talking about grants. We realize that the grant revenues don't match the grant expenditures. We're going to do a conversion um, so that they will. We also realize that we have to add some flexible chart of account utility codes. In the main book that Bob Beneke authored in 1998, um, he gave you a range. Same with the grants, gave you a range. So we're going to drill down and get some more co account codes for you to utilize. This is mine. Um, we need to create some class codes. We realize that right now your budget sorts in FCOA code order, and we realize that that doesn't actually represent your governmental unit, whether what type of government you are or however your administrative code is set up. So we're going to create what's called a class code, and that will be user-defined so that you can sort your budget the way your organization works. For example, if general government, CAFR 20, has administration, finance, tax assessments, tax collection, they'll all be grouped together and you'll have a subtotal within the, the section that it belongs in. If public safety, police, fire, EMS, OEM, that falls under the, that public safety function or that liaison um, or that commissioner, you'll have the uh, selection of what FCOA codes you want to put in what section. Validation, huge, huge, huge part of FAST. Okay, right now there's very little validation in um, the ADS and the SDS, so we're looking to install some validation so that the equalized valuations are populated to adjust from year to year. So when you have your 15, 16, and 17, when they roll over the next year, it'll be 16, 17, and 18, and it will continually roll over. We're looking to filter your bond groups. Okay, when Matt talks about your helpful hints and you'll see some screen navigation, it's going to give you some hints on that. This is the real mastermind, I want to tell you. <laughs> um, install some regional and local school logic. We understand that um, we had some trouble with the ADS and the SDS as it relates to local and um, regional schools. We're going to create a CFO certification prior to submission so that the CFO is actually certifying it and then submitting it at the same time. We're going to create alerts for debt limits. So if your debt limit is over 3.5%, it's going to give you a little red uh, notice to let you know of that and also give the division the same. And we're looking for the SDS if you have to file one to pull from the last filed ADS or SDS unless it's withdrawn. Install some validation in the AFS. This is the big report that we're looking for a lot of validation in. I'm going to take and start with the trial balance. Well, yes, we are going to reorganize according to the standard code. Okay, cash will be up at the top, not at the bottom. We're going to lock down accounts that are linked and that are calculated fields. So we all know that we start with other sheets and it comes back to the trial balance. If that's linked, it's going to be locked down so that you can't make that edit. Because we know that when you make that edit, it breaks the link. Okay, so we're going to lock that down so you're not able to do that. We're going to allow to add for specialized accounts. We all know that you have your standard trial balance, but there are uh, cases where you have to put in your interfunds um, and those that are specialized to your uh, local entity. And then we're going to allow the separation of deferred charges and emergencies according to title. Right now, they all group together for one total. Some continuation validation on the annual financial statement. Um, on the RUT, uh, we all know that in, in the time that we're in now that we submit the RUT with our budget. So we're going to give you a checkbox and um, that, that will let us know that you're going to insert the option to submit with the budget. However, it is part of the AFS, so we don't want to take away the integrity of that document. We're going to allow certifications by other officials. Right now, the CFO is certifying for the tax collector, the tax assessor, and other officials. We're going to open it up so that that person that holds that title will actually log into FAST and make that certification. That certification by the CFO will not be allowed until the assessor and the tax collector makes that certification. We're going to correct many of the calculated fields that are not calculating correctly. We're going to validate for obvious calculations 
prior to the CFO submission. So things like your debit sequel and your credits, not a big deal, right? Um, we're gonna make, <laughs> I was being sarcastic. We're gonna make sure that your debit sequel your credits prior to submission. Some validation on the budget. We're gonna insert logic for the budget process. You'll have an introduced budget, you'll have an amended budget if necessary, and you'll have it adopted. We're going to correct the advertisement and the public hearing dates. They were not pulling correctly or giving you the opportunity to make that adjustment. We're gonna auto-populate the cap calculations to the exp explanatory statement. Right now, that's a text field. You're gonna add it all in manually. So we're looking to take, when you do the cap calculations on a separate tab, um, when you do that, that information will automatically populate onto your explanatory statement. And then we're gonna lock down calculated data fields, tax rates, totals, et cetera, throughout the budget document. We're gonna add a checkbox for new revenues, okay? Right now, if you put a new revenue in, um, it kind of alert, it doesn't alert us, so we'll, we'll need that for our, our approval process. You'll see very shortly um, when FAST has the production moved out, we'll have the amendments menu, which will include chapter 159, change of title and text, emergencies and special emergencies. They will all be available for FAST. And then whatever you do as an amendment, part of the rollover process, it will grab that data and start off of your beginning balances, uh, I'm sorry, in, in the appropriate titles on your next year's budget. And then we're going to look to insert logic for your three or six year capital plan. So now I'm going to introduce the mastermind behind FAST. Um, and he's gonna take you through a navigation and some helpful hints. And you get an opportunity to match the face behind uh, the phone calls that you're making. Thank you very much. So just some navigation through each of the documents. So starting on the annual debt statement and supplemental debt statement. On the ADS, on the summary page, that's where you would uh, do the CFO lookup as well as the certification of the ADS and validation is gonna be in there that the CFO has to uh, do the certification before they actually submit the document. The other bonds, notes, and loans section is where those um, bond groups are mostly used, and I'm gonna go through that when I do a helpful hints portion. And the supplemental debt statements are found in your existing annual debt statement. So on the left side navigation tabs, on the uh, annual debt statement, the very last one is your SDS, and your ADS must be filed in order to create the SDS. On the supplementals, that's also gonna have a certification. That's where your net debt from your ADS is going to display and where you can add the bond ordinances. And then uh, the regional school section, we are going to, uh, that's where the schools are gonna populate from one year to the next, so they're not gonna need to be added each year. And then on the notes, attachments, and report generation, that's where you can not only generate the report, but you can add the documentation for your bond ordinance. Moving on to the annual financial statement, so all the AFS certifications, collector, assessor, CFO, debt, RMA, are all found on the tab on the left side that's labeled Affidavit, Cert, and Report of Financial Assistance. That's the second tab from the top on the document. And these are the ones that we're going to have the validation in um, that you'll have to complete the certifications prior to the submission of the document. On the general budget revenues and allocation of current tax collections tab, there was some confusion there. The 159s that used to be listed on sheet 17A are listed and added at the top of this tab, and they display in the first total line right below the grid. So that's the picture here on this slide. And finally, the utilities. This is a uh, change actually happened already. The utilities have been split into tabs, so you don't have that long running window anymore when adding utility information to the AFS. You'll click into a new tab for the utility, and they are split into sections similar to how the Excel documents were. Some navigation on the budget. So all of your budget certifications, that tab includes the roster of officials where you can enter each individual that will display on the first page of the report. Your budget publication details, each of the newspapers that municipalities have used in the past for their budgets are listed there, and that's a lookup field. And then as well as your votes for approval and adoption of your budget, um, a helpful hint there is to make sure that each one of your council members is entered into FAST as a contact prior to you completing this section. The tax rates tab is uh, UFB1, 
And on that tab, it's your estimated current year on the left side and the actual as of the, uh, for the prior year on the right side. Um, in terms of the calculations on that page, the valuations used for both years need to be entered in order for the rates and the tax levy amounts to calculate correctly. And at the bottom, that's where you would also enter your um, average assessed home value as well. RUT 1 and RUT 2, they're currently labeled as options, uh, but the way that the system's configured is they're actually not options. Um, RUT 1 is similar to the AFS old sheet 25, and RUT 2 requires the entry of your full budget amount, that's your total general appropriations, plus the amount for your actual reserve for uncollected taxes. Adding that amount in will calculate the rest of that page and calculate back to RUT 1. If you have any... Um, spots in your budget where you're currently seeing a negative amount display for your tax levy, that will display as such until RUT 1 and RUT 2 are both completed. For the utilities, any information that would normally go to the explanatory statement, that's on the, uh, the summary of appropriations expended and canceled page towards the beginning of the budget document, those do not automatically populate from the utility revenues and appropriations, but rather there's an explanatory statement tab on the utilities that must be filled out to populate them. Moving on to the user-friendly budget, on the UFB1, which is the tax rates tab, the actual or estimated that you're selecting from the drop-downs are based on what you're entering in that left side column back on the tax rates tab, where it's estimated for current year amounts. UFB2, you'll notice that it goes right from UFB1 to UFB3 in your uh, portal. UFB2, the revenue summary, is completely calculated from your old sheets 4 through 10, and that displays in the report for your review, but is not in the actual portal. UFB7, that's the personnel cost. Uh, in your appropriations, you're filling out the employee count. However, because personnel cost is broken down differently, union or non-union employees, firefighters, police officers, supervisory staff, because of that breakdown, that is a data entry tab. If those line items, uh, such as the uh, supervisory staff, governing body members, if they're not populating automatically, you can contact the help desk and we'll run the workflow to make sure all of those items are automatically appearing for you, and then you would just enter the actual count. So some helpful hints. Just in general, only the CFO can create or submit a document to the state. Generating reports can take a few minutes, and once you actually generate the report, you'll need to refresh the page in some way for the report to actually appear. So you can do that by simply refreshing your screen, navigating to another page and coming back, or clicking save and then on that page or another page and navigating back. That is because, again, to see the report, you need to refresh the screen so that it's, it's appearing after the generation. As long as the banner across the top of your screen, green banner, says that the report's being generated, you don't need to click report generation more than once. Again, if that's something that you believe is stuck and it's taking a very long time to generate the report, please contact the help desk. And finally, ensure that all of your officials are added as either users or contacts prior to actually completing the documents. So when you go to add your council members for a vote or when you're going to certify the various sections of the annual financial statement, all that will be a lot easier if all of your individuals are entered as contacts already in the system. And when they are contacts, ensure that they're both associated with your municipality. So some helpful hints on each of the documents. On the annual debt statement, there's those bond groups. They, they affect four different tabs throughout the document. The very first group refers to what tab is on the left side of the document. So bond group one was other bonds, notes and, no notes and loans. You'll see that on the left side there. And by selecting that first one, you're populating it to that page. Bond group two refers to a section on that page. And then bond group three, if applicable, would refer to a subsection on that page. So in this case, we have other bonds, notes and loans. Serial bonds is the section on the page. And it's either issued or authorized but not issued that you would select from bond group three. A good indicator of um, making sure that you're populating something to the right section is using the Roman numerals that display before the description as a guide. So Roman numeral one, in this case, appears before other bonds, notes, and loans, serial bonds, and issued. If you were to select other bonds, notes, and loans, but then the second option you picked had the Roman numeral for two below it or in front of it, 
you wouldn't populate that item to anywhere in the document, and that's another case where you'd have to call the help desk in order to remove that item. For the supplemental debt statement, be sure to use, um, excuse me, the ADS must be filed in order to do your SDS, and then also um, be sure that once you clicked once to generate the SDS document, that is the only time that you need to uh, click that to create it. If the SDS takes more than a few minutes to appear, again, you can contact the help desk for that. Some helpful hints for the AFS. So make sure to complete each of the certifications on the affidavit cert and report of financial assistance. And again, make sure that all of your contacts are entered prior to doing so. Uh, as Cynthia had mentioned, editing a linked record will override the calculation. So we can see here on the uh, trial balance record on the right, this one is a linked record and it's current fund mortgage sales receivable. If you were to select a different fund or if you were to change the text of mortgage sales receivable, even if it was making all the letters capital letters, it is changing the hard coding of that item, which is leading it to no longer pull from where it is supposed to be pulling from. So in this case, it wouldn't pull from the old sheet 27 where that information was entered because that update was made. And this is one where we're gonna lock down with the validation to prevent this from occurring. For sheet nine, that's the cash reconciliation, on what was sheet 9A, um, when you're entering your bank deposits, be sure to enter both the fund names, current fund or capital fund, and also the actual name of the bank. Again, the utility sections now display as individual tabs, so that's easier to navigate and just be sure to complete each of those tabs when you're going through. And then we're also going to work on setting up a recommended order for the completion of the document. So putting together a document to help you go through the AFS in a certain order to make it as user-friendly a process as possible. And finally, some helpful hints on the budget. So again, tax rates mimics the old UFB1 tab. An add button may be used to add new items in any spot on a page. So if you're entering revenues, you don't actually need to click the add button next to the section that you want to add to, but anywhere on the page. The revenues, by choosing the FCOA code, will populate to the applicable section. On the appropriations, if you're on inside caps or outside caps, uh, it's again, whatever appropriation that you are selecting is gonna determine where the item is gonna be placed and not actually where you're selecting the add button. Uh, if you do, if you are inside caps, let's say, and click an add button, and it is an FCOA code that's outside of caps, it will populate there. Um, but there is no populating a revenue to an appropriation or appropriation of revenues. That logic is built in. Again, the rut one and rut two, this is where some users were seeing a negative tax levy amount throughout their budget. Just be sure to complete both rut one and rut two. For the utility codes, only FCOA numbers that start with a 55 currently populate to the utility section. So if you were to select another item, the totals, uh, it might change in accordance with that item, but you won't actually see the line item anywhere on the utility section. And it's the same thing for the open space. Those are FCOAs that start with a 54. Any other items entered wouldn't appear in that section. On the UFB 8 health benefits, you're entering the employee cost sharing amount as a positive number and FAST knows to subtract that amount. Information that you would have included in your budget package in the past, anything that was submitted to the division, um, should be uploaded to the attachment section. The division can see those so when you submit your budget to the state, we will receive that entire package. And then also the employee counts uh, throughout the document in the appropriation sections allow for fractions. So if an individual's salary is charged to, let's say, both general government and the utility, you're able to put in those fractioned amounts accordingly. So the future modules and the timeline that we're, where we're at right now, currently our fiscal, uh, state fiscal year budgets are being submitted through FAST. Uh, what we have done because we realized that some of the enhancements uh, and the bug fixes have not been able to be pushed out. And this is due to a SQL problem. Uh, Microsoft and uh, the division and our, our partner technology group has been working on a daily, hourly basis trying to resolve those issues. Um, and we've, we, have, we, are, we are wildly optimistic that those issues will be resolved by next week's end. Um, so once that is done, we'll be pushing out all these enhancements. Um, and bug fixes that we, we see that will be um, in FAST, and then we can start to work on the enhancements and the validation and, and those items that we've discussed today.
County budgets, um, we are looking to pilot them. When I say pilot, that I mean you will be required to be submitted them through FAST. Uh, the division is working with some uh, counties that have already volunteered, and we really appreciate to do that. Uh, we'll look to uh, for their assistance in helping develop the FCOA codes that are necessary for your county operations, um, and then they'll be required to be used in 2020. Um, the template or the model uh, budget document has been created. Uh, we just need to work on the FCOA codes so we can roll them out. Fire district budgets, um, we're going to, again, pilot them in 2019. So if you're sitting in the room and you're a fire district, you will use the uh, traditional Excel document for that. Um, we're going to select some pilots to actually be required to submit through FAST uh, in 2019, and then every, everyone else will uh, be required in 2020. Um, once we get through the uh, municipal, then the county, and then the fire districts, then the authorities will, will work on getting them instituted. The templates of all of these documents and all these um, entities are already built, um, but we're just working on trying to work through getting the enhancements and the documents and what we have out there perfected. That's the goal um, of the division right now, to get everything working um, correctly. Um, we're really dependent on you. Uh, if you have an issue, we ask that you contact us. Uh, let us know what the issues are. If you can um, put them into an email and get them over to the help desk, we really appreciate that. Um, we need your feedback. Uh, we understand that this is a difficult process. It's change, um, and not everybody works with change as well as, as we would like. Um, but we do ask for your patience, your understanding, and your support. Um, our success is your success, um, and we're looking to partner for you as we always have. Here's just some information for the DCA help desk. Um, you can email the help desk at dca.nj.gov address or call area code 609-292-8134. And please include what, whether you're calling or emailing your name, the municipality that you're calling for, the document or module that you're working in, and then also a specific question or issues while you're working through that module. Thank you. We've allowed a little bit of time for uh, uh, question and answers. Uh, Bill Homer, Township of Cedar Grove, thank you for the presentation. Um, look, we're all in this together. We all want a better product. Um, I've been doing financial statements for 41 years, 35 years as in Cedar Grove, six years as an auditor. One of the things, and I know, Matt, you're the mastermind of uh, this whole product. The thing that I really had a difficult time with was when entering the information into the FAST portal. I don't understand why we couldn't in real time see what the financial document looked like. My problem was when I entered it into the portal, the only way I seen whether I had it in the right spot was by hitting generate report, go look at it, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong spot, go back in, correct it, and hit generate report again. And I know, you know, you're the mastermind, you put it together, I'm not a computer person, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I don't know why, if there was a way of us when we enter it, we're also kind of seeing what it looks like on the schedule without hitting generating report and then waiting. I don't know that I can respond because at this point, it doesn't, it doesn't um, give you a display of your work. Um, there's no way to see it. Um, it's not something that we have put in totals where totals are necessary, um, but part of the toolboxes that we're looking for is Way to create that. Sometimes when I entered the information into the portal and I went to go look at the schedule, I had to wait for the number to calculate. It didn't calculate that quickly. And I don't know if this could be done more. I, I, I realize we have to have, be patient, mm -hmm. but I, I know I did my receipts from delinquent taxes. I got a minus 39 million, <laughs> which I said, this can't be right. So I went to get a cup of coffee, and when I came back, it was then right. So if there was a way of trying to, if we're doing it, even with the, uh, the debt statement, the numbers coming up, boom, you know, more quickly than, you know, by me waiting, should I wait? Or is it, did I enter in something incorrectly? Just so we had something more real time. Alan Negri in River Edge. Just a clarification on the help desk. 
Are you saying now that the help desk is the gatekeeper for all questions, whether they are IT questions or whether they are financial accounting questions? Uh, because in the way it worked last year, basically Maureen was handling more financial or accounting questions. And then if we did have a software or an IT issue, we were going through the help desk for that information. But are we now, whatever the question might be, submit it as the gatekeeper here and let them decide who's going to get back to us and resolve that issue? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's very important um, for you to put your document that you're looking for, what, what the issue is, so that we can um, put it to the right person that could help you assist with it. So yes, it is a gateway, um, and that's how, how we're asking for you to respond or put your questions in. The speed of which when one clicks enter to submit a, a standard line item, it takes a, a long time for that to go to, to enter another line item. Has that been addressed at all? I mean, that's one of the major problems, especially when this whole room is entering everything on that system. So our technology partner continues to work on the speed of the document that there's been recommendations in the past that have been made by Microsoft because it's a Microsoft platform to our technology partner and they are working towards pushing out some of those speed enhancements. We've tested some for the AFS that worked pretty successfully. So we're looking to replicate that in the production environment now.